everybody, welcome back to the new Boston YouTube channel. Today we're going to be learning about using the free transform tool in Illustrator CS6. Now the free transform tool allows you to rotate, scale, reflect, or shear an object. Additionally, you can apply perspective and distortion to an object as well. So that's basically it that you can do with it. You can, there's some other things and tricks you can do, but we'll go over just the basics, I guess. And the first thing you need to do is go ahead and select an object that you want to use the free transform tool on. And then you're going to go over to the free transform tool icon, and you can see that the hotkey is E and select it. And I'll just go over what you can do with it. You can transform, you can move. If you try to hold down Alt and drag, it's not going to copy like it would do with the regular selection tool. You can resize or scale. You can mirror. And you can rotate. And those things you can also do with the regular selection tool. But here's where the cool stuff starts coming in. The first thing we're going to go over is shearing. And if you start dragging on one of the sides, then hold down control, you're able to move it along like this and slant the object. And that's called shearing. The next thing is called perspective. And if you grab one of the side handles again and then hold control, alt, and shift and start dragging, you're going to get some perspective into this. Now, it doesn't work as well with a square, but it'll work a lot better with the, um, with the star here. So if I go ahead and select the star, and go ahead and start making some perspective here. Now it kind of looks like the left side of the star is closer to us and the right side of the star is a little further away. That's perspective. The last thing I wanted to show you is called distort. And all you got to do is click and drag on one of the corners and then hold control. And now you can just distort that corner. Now, with the store, it only works on the bounding box. It doesn't work on, like, certain points. Like, I can't just distort this corner over here of the star. i got to distort it from the bounding box, and it's it's going to... I don't have the free, select, or free transform tool selected. No, I do. It's going to just go from the bounding box and not from the corner points. And then, using that, I mean, you can get a little bit more perspective in there. So that's called distort. Something I wanted to show you guys was using smart guides when you have are transforming an object. So to set that up, you need to go into edit because in preferences and then go to smart guides. And it's not going to be selected, which is transform tools right here. And if you click this, since we're in smart guides, it's going to add smart guides to our trans free transforming. If I click on that and then start using my free transforms, you can see that some smart guides are appearing. As you can see, now they're lining me up with whatever it's lining up with there, and then the, the bottom of the, of the uh, square there, or rectangle, whatever it's called. So that's how you use your smart guides. Now, if you don't see any when you're doing that and you have that checked, go into View, then come down here to Smart Guides and make sure you have it checked off or else you're not going to be able to see them. Control U is how to turn on and turn off smart guides as a hotkey. So the last thing I want to show you is how to transform if you need specific values. So go to Window, and we got to go and open up our Transform panel. So click on Transform, and it'll show up here. Now X and Y are for transforming, and we can just move things left and right or up and down using that. So if I put in something like 500, it's going to transform to the left on the x-axis. Now, width and height here are sc for scaling. And to the right here, we've got a broken chain link. And then if I click on it, it's a chain link that's together. If it's broken, then these are going to scale separately. If they are linked, then when I scale one of these, the other one's going to scale with it proportionally. So if I put this on at 200, you can watch the height is going to, watch the numbers and the height, they're going to scale as well. And that's how we get that. 
To the left here, we've got rotate. And you can put in a predefined rotation value or you can put in your own. So if I wanted to type something in like 28, I can get that as well. And then for shearing, I can do the same thing and start shearing. Now there's other things that I want to show you within the options. If I click on this and I go to show options, we've got align to pixel grid and scales and strokes or scale strokes and effects. So if you have align to pixel grid checked off, it's going to make things less blurry or prevent blurry lines. Now normally it won't be checked and you don't need to have it checked unless you're starting to get blurry lines in your object. If you go to check scale strokes and effects, what it's going to do is it's going to take the stroke line on here and scale it along with your object when you start scaling it up. If you don't have it checked, when you start scaling things, the stroke is going to stay the same size and it might not look as cool or it might not look cor as correct. So you're going to have to go up and then increase the size so that it's uh, relative to the uh, actual object. Let me go back. But if you have it checked and you start scaling, the actual stroke, as you can see, is going to scale with it. So it looks more like it's supposed to. So usually you want to have that checked off. And then there's a few other things in here like flip horizontal, flip vertical, and you've got some like transfer object only, pattern, or both. So that's all I wanted to show you about using the free transform tool. Remember that the hotkey is E. You're going to be using it a lot, so remember that hotkey and you, so you can switch out quickly and efficiently and get your projects done faster. So thanks everybody for watching. If you, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like below. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet to stay tuned for more Illustrator tutorials and computer programming tutorials and all that stuff. All the cool videos that we start posting on here. It's going to be, they're going to be awesome. So thanks a lot for watching and have a good day, everybody.